Okay, so in this video we want to look at the concept of conditional probability. Um, so conditional probability, we're often looking for the phrase given that in the sentence, but we won't always see that. But if you don't see it, you want to think about whether you could rephrase it using the statement given that. So conditional probability, the probability of event A occurring when it is known that event B has occurred is called conditional probability and is written like this and we would read that as the probability of A given B. So that is the probability that A happens given that B is known to have happened. Okay. Conditional probability essentially has the effect of reducing the sample space. That's really all that it does. And it can be thought of quite intuitively. There is a formula, and we'll get to the formula, but in many cases, the numbers that you need are sitting right there in front of you. So let's have a think about a simple example. So let's suppose that a fair die is rolled. We want to know what is the probability that a six was rolled, given that we know an even number was rolled. Okay. So this is the probability of a six given that an even number was rolled. So probability of a six is one in six, but it's not. there aren't six possible outcomes here because we've, we're giving you the condition that we know that an even number was rolled. So if we know that an even number was rolled, we know that only three possible outcomes happened, two, four, or six, and therefore the probability that we have a six, it's one out of those three possible outcomes, i.e. one outcome is a six out of the even outcomes. Okay. All right, example two. 100 students were classified according to age and gender. They're either under 16 or 16 or over, and they're either male or female. Um, a student is selected at random from the 100 students. Given that the student is male, find the probability that he is 16 or over. So probability that his age is bigger than or equal to 16, given that he's male. Okay, so given that he's male, we're reducing the sample space down to be only about the males. So out of the 66 males, what is the probability that he's, he is 16 or over? 52 out of the 66 males are 16 or over. Okay, uh, so let's halve those. So what's that? 26 over 33. There's my fraction in simplest form. Okay, so it's about, it's not out of the 100 um, students because We've, we've reduced the sample space down from being out of the 100 students because we know the student is male, so we're now only out of the 66 students. So conditional probability is really just about reducing the sample space by giving you a condition. Um, we can formulate it into a, into a formula, okay? And this is um, not a formula that comes out of nowhere. If we were to think about a Venn diagram as an example, okay, if I have A and B, and I want to work out the probability of A given B, okay? So this would be about, given that B has happened, given that it must be someone in this circle, what is the probability that they are in A? So we would be calculating that green section, probability of A intersection B, over probability of B. Okay? If it was the other way around, if it was probability of, if it was probability of B given A. So the condition is given A. Given that it's somewhere in this A circle, what is the probability that also in B? So in this case, again, it would be the probability of A given B, the intersection, over the probability of A. So it is the intersection of the two things over the second thing intersection of the two things over the second thing. Okay, That's our formula for conditional probability. And this leads us to a rule which is called the multiplication rule for probability. If we multiply both sides of the equation there by B, we find the probability of A intersection B is the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And we've actually been using that informally in tree diagrams before now. Um, okay, so I don't want you to jump to the formula if it's not needed though. In a simple problem like this, or this, you really can think it through very logically. Um, all right, conditional probabilities, as I said, can be easily seen in tree diagrams. That's where we see them most commonly. So let's just work through some examples. A jar contains five green marbles and seven red marbles. Two marbles are selected without replacement. G represents the event that a green marble is selected and R represents the event that a red marble is selected. Draw a tree, di tree diagram to represent this situation. Okay, so we're selecting two marbles 
at the first selection there are two things that could happen. We could select a red marble or we could select a green marble. Then that's our first selection. Then we make a second selection and again we could select a red marble or a green marble. Again we could select a red marble or a green marble. Now there's a key phrase here that is without replacement and that's going to be important. Okay, So let's think about weighting the probabilities on our tree diagram. So when we draw a tree diagram we draw um, the outcomes at the ends of the branches and the probabilities on the branches. I find that students often jumble that up. So just think first of all about forget about the probabilities. What are the things that can happen? Here's the combination of things that can happen. They can draw red and then red, red and then green, green and then red, green and then green. That's what can happen. Then we'll weight the branches according to their probabilities because these aren't four equally likely outcomes. Okay, so the first selection, um, the jar contains five green marbles and seven red marbles. So the probability of choosing a red marble is seven out of 12 and the probability of choosing a green marble is five out of 12. Okay, then we need to think about our second stage of probabilities because of this without replacement. So if we select a red marble first, we now have five green marbles and six red marbles, which means the probability of choosing a red marble at the next selection is six out of the 11 remaining marbles and the probability of choosing a green marble, there are five green marbles out of the remaining 11 marbles. If, on the other hand, we chose a green marble first, we now have a jar containing four green marbles and seven red marbles. So the probability of choosing a red is seven out of 11, and the probability of choosing a green is four out of 11. These four probabilities here are all conditional probabilities. That is the probability of choosing a red marble given that I previously chose a red marble. That is the probability of choosing a red marble given that I previously chose a green marble. That is the probability of choosing a green marble given that I previously chose a red marble. And this is the probability of choosing a green marble given that I previously chose a green marble. The second stage is all about conditional probability. So state each of the following, so these should all be in the diagram. The probability of choosing a red given that I chose a green, that's 5 out of 11. No, sorry, that's the wrong way around. Probability of choosing a red given that I chose a green is 7 out of 11. Probability of choosing a green given that I chose a red, that is 5 out of 11. Probability of choosing a green given that I previously chose a green, that is 4 out of 11. Okay, example 4. In a particular class, 55% of the students are girls. 35% of the girls in the class play soccer and 70% of the boys play soccer. A student is chosen at random from the class. If G represents the event that a girl is chosen and S represents the, effect, the event that a student plays soccer, find. Okay, so let's first of all set up a tree diagram to represent the information so we've got it organised. From, from there we can then answer all of the probability questions. Okay, so um, in terms of structuring the tree diagram, we've got two stages that are either girl or not girl, play soccer or doesn't play soccer. It's important that we get the sequencing of that right, because depending on the prob probabilities we've been given. So we've been given conditional probabilities that tell us, depending on their gender, whether or not the likelihood that they play soccer. So therefore, the first stage of the tree diagram needs to be about the gender. Now it says G is the event that a girl is chosen. So not G is event that a not girl is chosen and then, um, then they can play soccer or not play soccer. It's really important that we use a tree diagram rather than a Venn diagram or a Karnar map because two of the values we've been given here are, are um, conditional probabilities. That is, um, actually it's not, 35% of the girls in the class, oh yes it is, that is the probability that someone plays soccer given that they're a girl is 0.35. And this is the probability that someone um, plays soccer given that they're a boy, so not a girl, um, and that is 0.7. Okay. Um, so the only way to actually put them in a diagram, we don't have space for conditional probabilities in a Venn diagram or a Kana map, so we use the tree diagram. Okay, so what do we know? 55% of the students are girls in the class, so 0.55 and 0.45. Um, of the girls, 35% of them play soccer, so 0.35 and 0.65. And of the non-girls, 70% of those play soccer, 0.7 and 0.3. Okay, so there's our information. 
and now we want to calculate our probabilities. So the probability that someone is a girl, that is just 0.55. Got that in the question, we've got that sitting here in the tree diagram. Probability that someone, um, so soccer intersection girl, so that is play soccer and is a girl. Okay, so that is this branch here. So that is 0.55 times 0.35. I'm just going to use my cats here. 0 0.1925. Probability that someone plays soccer. Okay, so probability of S is either the probability that they are a girl and play soccer or probability that they are not a girl and they play soccer. So girl and soccer we've got up above there, that's 0.1925 plus not girl and soccer is 0.45 times 0.7. So point, sorry, I'll take my previous answer and I'll add on 0.45 times 0.7 and that gives me 0.5075. So 0.5075 probability that someone in the class plays soccer. Probability that they don't play soccer well, that's easiest to work out from the probability that they do play soccer. So that'd be one minus the probability of playing soccer. And so one minus 0 0.5075. So one minus this value here, which is 0 0.4925. Okay, probability of S dash intersection G dash. So don't play soccer and not a girl. Okay, so that is going to be, um, this time we are interested in our tree diagram in this branch, so 0.45 times 0.3, so 0 0.135. Probability to play soccer given that they're a girl, that's sitting in the tree diagram staring at us, no calculation required. Probability to play soccer given that they're a girl, are a girl is 0 0.35. Probability that they play soccer given that they are not a girl is also sitting in the tree diagram and also just straight from the question is 0.7. Probability that they are a girl given that they play soccer, we're going to need to, because that's backwards in the tree diagram, we're going to need to think through the formula. So this is the probability of being a girl and playing soccer over the probability of playing soccer. We've worked out those probabilities previously. So girl and soccer is at part B. So that's 0 0.1925. Probability of soccer is at part C. That's 0 0.5075. So in my case, it is that number divided by that number. And we're going to need some accuracy here because that is not a exact value. So I'm going to say, let's give this one to four decimal places. All the others were exact. so. That's fine, but here I'm going to round off and the question should have instructed me. 0.3793 is the probability that some a player is a girl given that they play soccer. Okay, Oops, sorry. Example 5. Um, probability of rain next Saturday is 0.7. The probability that a particular football team wins when it is raining is 0.3. The probability that they win when it is dry is 0.45. Let's find the probability they'll win next Saturday. Given that they win next Saturday, find the probability that it's raining. Okay, so let's set up a tree diagram down here in the space. So either it's raining or not raining. Okay, so raining or dry, let's say. And then they either win or lose. Let's fill in what we know. So probability of rain next Saturday is 0.7, therefore 0.3 chance that it's dry. Probability that a particular football team wins when it is raining is 0.3. So probability of a win given that it's raining is 0.3, therefore probability of a lose given that it's raining is 0.7. Probability that they win when it is dry is 0.45. So probability of a win given that the weather is dry is 0.45. Therefore, probability of losing 0.55. They're obviously not a good team. They've got a less than 50% chance of winning whether it's dry or wet. That's okay. Those teams have to exist. Okay, I'm just going to move my tree diagram down out of my way a little bit more so I've got some space. 
Okay, find the probability that they will win next Saturday. Okay, so there's two ways to win. It's raining and they win, or it's dry and they win. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, so the probability of winning is going to be 0.7 times 0.3, so that's the probability of raining and winning, or so plus probability of being dry, 0.3 and winning, times 0.45. Okay, so that is going to be 0.21 plus... Uh, 0.135 and so that is going to be 0 0.345 just going to check that 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.45 um, just be clear that you do need to be able to do that level of fraction and decimal work by hand um, I'm using my CADs to make things a bit more efficient here but certainly um, that would be perfectly possible um, in a tech free paper for you to be expected to know that 0.7 times 0.3 is 0.21 and 0.3 times 0.45 is 0.135 so what I'm doing in my head there is I'm doing 7 times 3 is 21 and so 0 0.7 times 0.3 is 0 0.21 Point, I'm doing 3 times 45 is 135 and so 0.3 times 0.45 is 1.135 okay essentially the number of digits after the decimal place still needs to be the same so 7 times 3 is 21 I need to have 21 so that it's got two, 2 and 1 with 2 digits after the decimal place, so 0.21. This has 3 digits after the decimal place, so all of the 135 is after the decimal place. You should also be able to think through, it's not going to be 2.1. If you're finding a fraction of a fraction, it's going to get smaller. Okay, given that they win next Saturday, find the probability that it's raining. So this time we want the probability of rain given that we know the team had a win. Okay, so again, this is going backwards in the tree diagram. These are probability of win given rain. So this is rain given win, so we're going to need to use our formula. So probability of rain and win over the probability of winning. And we've already worked out the denominator up there. So probability of raining and winning is 0.7 times 0.3 over the probability of winning is 0.345. So that is 0 0.21 over 0 0.345. We're going to multiply both top and bottom by 1,000. So that's 210 over 345. They're definitely both divisible by 5. Um, that would be 42 over... Uh, I'm dividing by 10 and then doubling. Um, so 34.5 doubled is 60, 69. Again, that level of number work is perfectly... Um, acceptable in a tech-free assessment. Okay, You certainly wouldn't be giving a rounded decimal there, there's no need to do that and in fact back up here probably where it didn't tell me to round I just should have given my answer as 1925 over 5075 1925 over 5075, they're both divisible by 5 so 11 on 29, still a nice exact answer. Um, okay so the work here is from exercise 9F, practicing your conditional probability.